Keys to victory, Fury versus Wilder 3. Who wins this fight? How does each man win this fight? Let's jump into it. Deontay Wilder, keys to victory to beat Tyson Fury. Let's go. So, obviously, Deontay Wilder's coming at 238 pounds of, for uh, this fight. I was expecting him to come in a little bit lighter than he did. You know, I was expecting him to come in, you know, more nearer the weight he had against Dominic Brazil. You know, that 223, you know, the early two, early 220s, you know, in order to benefit a bit more from his speed and his agility, you know, to move around the ring a lot more and, you know, to be a lot more quicker and a lot more explosive with those right hands that he throws. But um, not so. Uh, Deontay Wilder's decided to put on more weight than he even did in the rematch. You know, seven more pounds. He was 231 pounds in the rematch. He's put on more weight now. To what benefit? We don't know. Maybe, you know, he's been able to, you know, we haven't obviously we haven't seen Deontay Wilder in the ring in a while, so we don't know what the Wilder looks like at this kind of weight. But maybe, you know, training with Malik Scott, they would have known that he's weighing this weight and maybe he's been sparring and he's been training and he's looked good, you know, moving around the ring and he's been able to keep some of those agility factors and speed factors that he's got, you know, at the lower weight and he's still moved up and he's still been able to keep that along with the fact that maybe he might be hitting a lot harder. You know, he wants to try and keep Tyson Fury down this time. But yeah, man, 238 uh, pounds. You can check my previous video on my reaction to, you know, the weigh-in itself. But, uh, you know, Deontay Wilder's keys to victory. Some of the things that Deontay Wilder needs to do, I've said this on multiple occasions. I've said it in my analysis video of the rematch that Deontay Wilder needs to be more in, in terms of his offense, he needs to be more sophisticated in how he throws his shots, when he throws his shots, and this and how he decides to do it. You know, you know, he, everybody's known Deontay Wilder as the one trick pony throwing that right hand. If the white right hand doesn't land, it's probably going to be a loss on the scorecards. But, uh, you know, I've said on multiple occasions, Deontay Wilder, you know, he needs to take advantage of what Tyson Fury is doing. You know, Tyson Fury is the naturally the bigger man at 277 pounds. He's going to naturally be imposing, you know, on Deontay Wilder. So go with the flow. You know, if Tyson Fury wants to walk you back, he wants to push you back and, you know, I expect Tyson Fury to come in similarly with the, ed the game plan of educated pressure on Deontay Wilder, not taking unnecessary risks of rushing in, but at the same time, you know, taking that, you know, half step forward, you know, using that long jab that Tyson Fury likes to do to put the pressure on Deontay Wilder, especially the fact that his jab is a lot harder than it was in the first fight, which really shocked Deontay Wilder in the rematch. That's what Tyson Fury is probably likely going to do, especially from the off. So, what Deontay Wilder needs to do is be a bit more sophisticated using feints to try, you know, make get Tyson Fury thinking. If Tyson Fury backs him up to the ropes, you know, he needs to, you know, use those feints. You know, I don't know what he's been working in Malik Scott in the gym in terms of, you know, trying to learn to slip shots, getting his feet, his feet you know, in the right place, taking a half step back and things like that, cutting off the ring. So I feel like if Deontay Wilder is able to, you know, Use that head movement, use those feints, you know, to get Tyson Fury thinking, to slip the shots and things in that sense. If he's been able to get this down pat with Malik Scott, like Malik Scott says, you know, he needs to try and find a way to sneak those counter right hands in, you know, make Tyson Fury pay for his offense. That is something that Deontay Wilder is going to have to do if he wants to be victorious in this fight. Because, you know, in the first fight, he struggled with the big man and the boxing, then, you know, that big man power and the boxing ability that Tyson, he just didn't know what to do, man. He didn't know, you know, he, he just looking for right hands. You need to be sneaky. You need to set the traps, man. You need to set the mirages. That's what you need to, like, like you know, that's just what you've got to do. You know, Deontay Wilder is someone he knows how to, he knows how to throw that counter right hand. He rocked Luis Ortiz in the first fight with a counter right hand on the ropes. He was backed up by Arthur Spilker, detonated a right hand on him, knocked him out. You know, backed up by Dominic Brazil, cracked him with a right hand, sent Dominic Brazil fleeing into the into the next corner on the other side of the ring after getting caught, you know, by a big right hand. So it's not, you know, foreign for, you know, Deontay Wilder to, you know, launch that, that counter right hand. And I feel like this is definitely going to be a tool that he's going to have to use, you know. Also, 
he's been they've his team has been talking about you know throwing you know throwing that jabs to the body if possible he did he did try to do that in the rematch but he just kept overreaching you know because obviously Tyson Fury the bigger man the distance the only one is having to try and you know established to throw that you know jab to the body and Fury's taking a half step back it is a bit difficult for Deontay Wilder to get that jab in there if he's able to that will probably be positive in order to slow Tyson Fury down break him down to the body try and drop get those hands dropped down to give him the opportunity to throw that overhand right over the top that is another thing that Deontay Wilder should potentially be looking at but the keys, the main keys to victory for Deontay Wilder, if Tyson Fury comes through with the similar game plan that he did in the first fight, and I'm very sure they've watched the film, they've watched the videos, you know, they've seen two versions of Tyson Fury now, the boxer and the guy with the educated pressure. So Deontay Wilder needs to be prepared for all versions of Tyson Fury. The guy can change his plan immediately in the middle of the fight. You know, there's not let's plan for the boxer or let's plan for the, the rematch guy you have to be ready for all forms of Tyson Fury in order to get the job done so counter right hands on the back foot are going to be key because Deontay Wilder he's always been that guy that needs to be have that front foot leverage to you know put that generate that power to detonate and punch through his opponents you know he has on three occasions like I mentioned been able to crack you know, these opponents on the back foot if he's able to do it, Tyson Fury, especially when Tyson Fury is open, you know, to being countered in in offense, you know, when he's coming in for offense, if Deontay Wilder is able to, you know, slip shots, take that 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 take that, you know, slip the shots, you know, and get sneak those counters in, you know, faints faints here and there to you not know, confuse Tyson Fury, you know, I give Deontay Wilder a very good chance of having at least success or having definitely getting a knockdown if he's able to execute any of these points to any sort of, you know, credible performance. So that is just what I feel on Deontay Wilder. Obviously, Deontay Wilder carries this punching power. He could spark spark Tyson Fury's lights out at any time in the fight. So it might not even necessarily be a counter right hand. He could just go in there, potentially Tyson Fury's caught sleeping and bombed him out. Also, we don't know if Tyson Fury's had the best camp. You know, obviously, you know, he's had issues quote unquote some issues in sparring obviously he's been having some issues that he's been dealing with from his side as well has this necessarily been the best camp for Tyson Fury possibly not so these are all aspects that Deontay Wilder's probably hoping will fall put all the aces in his favor but it remains to be seen with seen Tyson Fury you know come through with not necessarily you know you know the best shape like he did in the first fight and he was able to come through and really cause Deontay Wilder a lot of problems you know but I highly suspect that he's re he's a rematch camp for the second fight I don't suspect that this camp has gone as well uh as the rematch camp just for the mitigating circumstances that people would say that Tyson Fury's had to deal with but nevertheless Tyson Fury's the guy that rises up to the occasion so you know <laughs> you can you can't really tell what this guy's going to really do. And maybe he might come out and surprise us. And he's talking about getting a knockout. We have to wait and see if that really happens. But in terms of Deontay Wilder, like I said, you know, he's a dangerous, dangerous man. Underestimate Deontay Wilder at your peril. I certainly don't. This is heavyweight boxing. It only takes one shot. One jab, 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 jab to the body. Through his hands are coming down. Overhand right over the top. And it could be lights out at any time. Counter right hands on the ropes. Counter right hands on Fury coming in. Faint, 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 faint. Get this guy thinking. Sneak the right hand in. He could be good night. So that's possibly what could happen in Deontay Wilder's favor. Um, in terms of Tyson Fury, you know, I, I don't want to say more of the same because this is probably what Deontay Wilder is expecting. But educated pressure is highly important for Tyson Fury. All this with knockout, knockout, knockout. Tyson Fury likes to say that. Tyson Fury is a very smart man. You know, he's not going to underestimate Deontay Wilder. He's, to, he's going to come in there. One, the key aspects that, that Deontay Wilder struggled with, with Tyson Fury, actually was the hard, hard, strong jab that, the, that Tyson Fury has got now. Sugar Hill, Crunk Jim, a lot stronger jab than he had in the initial fight, first fight with Deontay Wilder. 
that is definitely what he's going to have to use to keep Deontay Wilder rock back on his heels. You know, educated pressure as well, anticipating, looking for what Deontay Wilder's doing, especially that right hand in order to take the half step back. Because in the, in the rematch, a lot of right hands whisk past, you know, um, what you call it, Tyson Free's chin. He was able to ride the shots, you know, just take the sting out of them so Wilder can punch through him. Wilder's now talking about punching through Tyson Fury. Fury's got to be paying attention at every point, at every split second, or he can end up finding himself on the canvas. So paying attention, using that strong jab to keep Deontay Wilder rocked in. So following that up, you know, following that up, you know, with marauding tactics, trying to bully Deontay Wilder on the inside like he did last time, you know. Also, he should be, you know, like Tyson Fury has to be a master of manipulation and mind games. Golden Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, we've seen, you know, yeah, you know, very can be quite an emotional guy. He can get very invested in the fight, especially if it's not going his way. Tyson Fury did use a lot of those tactics in the first fight. So that is a lot of tactics. That's another form of tactics Tyson Fury might want to use again, you know, especially if Deontay Wilder's not having any success, you know, to get Deontay Wilder out of his rhythm. And maybe Wilder will start looking to start throwing those haymakers all of a sudden. So the big bronze bomber punches and then completely throw him off the elite squad game plan and that kind of falls into Tyson Fury's, you know, hands. All Fury's going to do now, it's going to be easy for him to detect what Deontay Wilder's doing, you know, if he's able to get into his head and force Wilder to revert back to type, looking for the right hands recklessly and then, you know, it just becomes a matter of a throw and hope from Deontay Wilder and Fury's just anticipating everything. So that is another, in terms of the psychological dynamics Fury might be looking at. But like I said, man, it's just pretty much not so much of a, a, a carbon copy of what he did in the rematch. Where's the fact? Because Deontay Wilder's probably prepared for that version. You know, it's probably going to have to be a mixed bag of the boxing, a mixed bag of the educated pressure, the, the, the tem uh, depending on the tempo of the fight. But uh, yeah, man, I just feel like, you know, if, if Tyson Fury executes, you know, what he did in the in the rematch, but mixes it up a bit more with the boxing as to not become so much predictable, I feel like that is probably Tyson Fury's keys um, to victory here. But, it's you know, it's very difficult to really say because we don't really know what version of Deontay Wilder we're going to see. If we get the Deontay Wilder that starts throwing right hands, that falls into Tyson Fury's favour, you know, because it's too predictable, man. But if we get the Deontay Wilder that, like Malik Scott says, you know, is looking to set the traps, set the decoys, quote-unquote, then it's going to be a lot more difficult for Tyson Fury. And I expect the fight will probably go, you know, obviously this fight could end at any split second, but a lot of people are saying they, they think the fight is going to go late rounds. Um, I, 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 Deontay Wilder's talking about the fight ending in five rounds. No, Wilder's talking about the fight ending in three rounds. Malik Scott talking about fight ending in five rounds. I don't know what's going to happen, man. It's just so, it's so nuts, man. Anything can happen, man. Heavyweight boxers, heavyweight boxing, man. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Fury did win, if it, if he won by unanimous decision on the scorecard. I just don't think that this, you know, what Tyson Fury did in the rematch is just going to be a carbon copy. It's not. I just don't believe it will be. I believe Deontay Wilder is going to be a lot more prepared for that version of Tyson Fury. And it's going to be a lot more competitive. And I feel like Deontay Wilder is definitely going to make a better account of himself because there's no way you can just have a rematch like that. Come back and you, you've trained, you've watched all the film, you've done everything and you just, it happens again. I highly doubt that, man. But when you've got two big men, two, 277, 238, anything can happen. Who do I favour in this fight to win? Uh, I'm going to go with anything can happen in heavyweight boxing. That's what I'm going to go with. Obviously, at this point, Tyson Fury is the favourite just because of the fact a lot of people think that he beat Deontay Wilder in the first fight. He's, he, he absolutely bullied Deontay Wilder and really bossed him in the rematch. So Tyson Fury is a heavy favourite. But at the same time, Tyson Fury hasn't defended his title um, titles before. He's not fought before and really been regarded as a favourite in a real high-profile fight. You know, he's always been used to being the underdog. So we need to understand how this the psychological dynamics of this is. Also, Tyson Fury's camp not being the greatest camp. We don't know what that's, that bearings that's going to have on his performance here. Obviously, no fight is going to exude negativity in, in how they talk. So the fight now is going to be the moment of truth. Deontay Wilder made it, making these adjustments. Is it really going to 
work? Is he going to revert back to type? If it doesn't work, we don't really know. Is he going to be listening to what Malik Scott's saying on fight now? Is he going to be going out there and doing his own thing? We don't really know. So it's difficult to call this fight. Obviously, people, like I said, people are favouring Tyson Fury, but we need to see, I want to see what this new Deontay Wilder so-called looks like. But drop your comments in the comment section below. Who do you think is going to win this fight? Do you favour Tyson Fury just based off his two previous performances? Do you give Deontay Wilder a chance to win this fight? What do you think about Wilder's weight at 238 pounds? Heaviest career weight. Is this going to have any impact on his speed, his agility and his ability to let off that right hand with explosive force and speed and velocity? Let's wait and see what happens, man. Tomorrow's the big one. It's going down. It's kicking off. Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. Let's have it.